In my previous video, we talked about making transparent emulsions for things like Crystal Pepsi or Crystal Cola, but it can be used to make any flavor using an essential oil that's not soluble in water using specific emulsifiers. Now that video led to a lot of questions about this technique and how you would use it for different oils like juniper or grapefruit. And other people came across some issues that I'm gonna go through because it will make you a better formulator when you're using this technique. So the first problem people have discovered is foaming. Now foaming isn't uncommon. Uh, actually you do add foaming ingredients to soda to give that head, but it's a pretty common issue in the beer industry as well. And you can buy defoamers if you find that your emulsion is creating your syrup or whatever to cause too much foaming. These are basically silicone based and they are pretty common. Again, you get them at your local homebrew store. This one's actually a health supplement that I tried a few years ago for a homebrewing experiment, and they work just fine. It's just silicone-based. And the trick with using silicone-based defoamers is use the smallest amount possible. Less is more. Once you use too much of it, it doesn't solve the foaming problem and then can actually increase the foaming problem. So test your syrup. If it foams too much, you can add a drop directly to your syrup and then work that in. Uh, and then you just keep testing until you get that and always document so you know how many drops you added to a liter of syrup, for example. You can dial it in so you can still get a, a reasonable head on your soda if that's what you want. And polysorbates, the ones used in these emulsions, do create a nice, you know, stable foam head, which can be nice. So the tricks to make sure it doesn't foam over the glass and you get it at the level you want. Defoamers are the way to do it. The second issue was a soapy flavor. And yes, uh, emulsifiers are basically a detergent. They are like a soap. The trick is not to use too much of it. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the third part. But if you're using a low amount of it and a lot of the flavor stuff is used in low levels, you're not going to taste it. Sometimes certain beverages like lemon flavors do have a natural soapy flavor already. Uh, we just don't perceive it as soapy. So depending on what you're making, it will just disappear. Uh, propylene glycol or glycerin can help cover that flavor up as well. So you can work that into your syrups. Uh, propylene glycol is already used in these emulsions, but if you wanted to add a small amount of glycerin, that will help the body of your beverage, but also help cover up some of this flavor. And there are some other flavor masking techniques that you can use. I'll get though into those ones in a later date. Because anytime you add a flavor masking agent, you may mask one flavor, but you also may mask another flavor. But glycerin tends to be pretty neutral. Propylene glycol helps. I haven't found it to be too much of an issue in any of these citrus-based beverages but you may find it in other ones. One of the things is people find the taste to be a little dulled when you're using an emulsifier. And that's kind of be, you know, to be expected. Whenever you're taking an oil droplet, that's your flavor, and you're putting this emulsifier around it, it's going to kind of dull the flavor a little bit. And so far I haven't found it to be too bad. Uh, there's a couple ways you can work around that. The first one is, is to try to use the smallest amount of emulsifier as possible. So in my original Crystal Pepsi video, Crystal Cola, I made a lemon emulsion. Now this has been hanging around for three weeks, perfectly stable, really happy with this one. But it used uh, one part of lemon oil to two parts emulsifier. So I'm making, working on a grapefruit soda video, and I'll be doing this one in the near future. But this is basically the same two parts emulsifier, one part grapefruit oil. It's stable, it's been hanging around for a week and a bit. So then I increased it, and this one is equal parts emulsifier and equal, or equal parts emulsifier and grapefruit oil. So you got twice the concentration of grapefruit oil and it's stable. I've actually turned it into this and it actually tastes pretty good. That is one way you can do that. Now the, the trick is you just gotta sit down and experiment. And you see all these beakers I've been experimenting for the last week and a bit, working on a few things. This is juniper oil. Uh, it's a little tougher to do, though I'm having some success, but 
I'll keep working on that one. That one would be obviously for non-alcoholic gin. You can try to increase this and I'll share all the information I have with you. But again, a lot of companies don't share this information. So we have to discover it on our own. I can look through all sorts of documents and stuff to help you, but you can do your own experiment. It only takes about 10 minutes to do this. Each one of these, if you have multiple hot plates, you can do it even quicker or even just multiple stirring plates. And the trick is to just keep increasing it and document what you do. That is so important. So I just document every time my formula, what happens. And then I let these sit out on the bench for a week, cover them up, but let them sit out and see what happens because they will start to break. So this one's broken, this one's broken. You may not be able to see it, but the oil is actually floating on top. This one, see, it's a little bit cloudy. That means there's still some emulsion in there. And I have a couple ideas on how to get the juniper in. So I'll be working on that one. But this one, I'll see if I can increase the grapefruit oil even more until the point where I break it. And then I'll just go back a little bit and then that will be a stable emulsion with more grapefruit oil than emulsifier. And that will improve the taste profile. Now the alternative, you can still work with these and you can also work with flavor compounds. So we've done lots of videos on how to work, you know, develop a flavor using soluble flavors. You can work with those with emulsions. The trick is not to put them into the emulsion. So you make your emulsion and it is treated just like one of these, like a separate compound. So one of the ones that really is going to help this grapefruit soda is grapefruit mercaptan. And this stuff is extremely potent and it, you can smell it in parts per trillion and it's typically used at one part per billion to impart flavor. We detect it that well. So the neat thing about this is that you don't have to worry about solubility at that level. You can make a separate dilution of this and just add it to your syrup at a drop or two. And I'll talk about that when I make the grapefruit video. But you just leave it outside of your emulsion and when it's in here it will add flavor without having this emulsion coating that affects the flavor and you can do that with nucatone which is another grapefruit flavor and you know any of the esters that you have lying around if you want to work those in you can add those outside of the emulsion you don't and then just add this as well so you can do multiple different ways to formulate things without tying everything into the emulsion another issue is stability these are esters so polysorbate is an ester sucrose esters are obviously esters and a lot of the non-ionic emulsifiers are esters. They do break down. So I mentioned before, this is ethyl butyrate and it is used in pineapple flavors. It will last a while, but over time it will undergo hydrolysis. The trick with that is, you know, you can keep it at a cooler temperature. So refrigeration really extends the life of those. pH is another issue. You really, if you can, want to, if you're going for shelf stability or long-term storage stability, you, you want to keep your pH at like 2.8 or above, 3.0, 3.2. That can affect the flavor, especially in something like grapefruit, which tends to have a really high acid level. So in this syrup here, I put 40 grams of citric acid, and that works out to five grams per liter uh, when all it's all mixed with soda water. So it's a high acid content and you know, you can even put more in there because grapefruit I think runs at about 20 grams or fresh pressed grapefruit juice runs at about 20 grams per liter of citric acid and just the fresh pressed juice. So it's quite acidic. This has been sitting around for a couple days. It hasn't broken the emulsion, which is good because sometimes high acidity can cause those problems. But so far it's working out quite well. Uh, I will just, once we do this grapefruit soda one, I'll be able to explain more about all this. But typically pH around three or higher, 3.2, 2.8, kind of the lowest and keep it in cool temperatures. Storing it in the syrup also helps because there's less water activity and that will slow down the hydrolysis of the emulsifier as well as your flavor ingredients if you're using other ones. Now, other people have asked about different emulsifiers like sucrose esters, and I am working on that. I think sucrose esters 
then have more of an appeal just based on their name, even though polysorbates are an ester and are very effective. Some people want to use sucrose esters and a few other ones. Uh, these are a couple exper quick experiments that I did. This one actually looked pretty good when I first started it, but it uh, uh, fell apart quickly. And this one, again, has fallen apart. This would be called ringing. You'll see a, a ring of oil around the top of this. I don't know if you can see it, but that's pretty common in the industry where you get the flavors separating out from the water. And then these are a couple more with juniper oil. Again, when you're experimenting with stuff, you can use all sorts of different emulsifications and use the technique and see if it works. All you have to do is, again, make sure you document this stuff while you're doing it so you can, because eventually you will hit upon something that works. And if you didn't document it while you're doing, you may forget what you did and then it's a whole pain in the butt to actually re-figure it out. So always just document stuff. But I've been doing a whole bunch of these. You run out of beakers eventually. But all of these have been actually pretty good experiments. And this juniper one for a non-alcoholic gin is getting there. But again, you just have to experiment you can do it in about five to 10 minutes with a hot plate where you can get these emulsions formed and see what happens. And then just let them sit out for a few days, just cover them uh, with plastic film and then just see whether they break. And that is the actual trick is that you make the things and then you set them aside and then you go back and check them. You'll see there's little numbers on each one of these corresponds to what I've written in my book. Let them sit out for a few days and then if they're still stable, then you create a syrup with them and so on and so forth. But the real trick is just to actually get experimenting. I will share all my information with you as I go through this. Again, the corporate world's not into sharing their proprietary information. So a lot of this is about, you know, redeveloping or reinventing the wheel for, you know, public consumption. If you're so inclined, do feel free to share your recipes over on Patreon or the Discord server. Uh, it will help other people. If you feel that you know, you're know you not gonna commercialize something and you're just doing this as a hobby, definitely share your information. Uh, it does speed this whatever I'm doing up. So beyond that, if you're using other uh, emulsifiers and you're not finding they're working with this method, homogenization is the way to go. You know, get a homogenizer and then just pulverize the emulsifier in your flavor oil to the proper particle size or droplet size. And then that will create a stable emulsion. These are the easiest emulsions to form using polysorbate and the oil and require the least investment in equipment. If everybody had lots of money and you know, money obviously wasn't uh, an issue. We'd all go homogenization, but uh, sometimes it's more fun just to figure things out with different techniques. So that's what I have for this emulsion. Do expect one on grapefruit soda coming up. I will probably finish off the Pepsi or the Crystal Cola video. Uh, there is a non-alcoholic or at least a juniper one coming up. I'm hoping as long as I can get the emulsion formed. And then the caramel one, uh, the caramel type four video still needs to be done. So there's lots of stuff to do and I will get to it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.